where I live one day. Saw a little sparrow on the pavement that had met someone's windshield. The words of Jesus came to me. Not one of these fall to the ground, but that my heavenly Father takes account thereof. His eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Thank you, Peg. I'm reading from Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 18. Mark 9. 14 through 18. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Not many Father's Day sermons are prepared anymore. In contrast to Mother's Day and a number of other special days of the year, Father's Day is largely ignored. That attitude, I think, is reflected in many ways. For one thing, it is reflected in the songs of our time. I ran across one song that said, everybody works but father. And then I, I found another song. And one stanza of that song goes like this. Dad, 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 the dear old worthless geezer, the fuzzes, fusses I have had with that old patience teaser. He lacks the spirit of a mouse. Most anyone can down him. We let him hang around the house. Tis cheaper than to drown him. There are good fathers and there are bad fathers. I acknowledge that fact. Nevertheless, I think we should honor those fathers who have earned their position as a good father. Now this fellow we find in our scripture is a good father. Not only that, but uh, I think we can correctly say that he is a great father. We don't know his name. We don't know where it came from. We don't know whether it's rich or poor. There's very little along those things, lines that we do know about him. But we can confidently say that he was a great father. His conversation with Jesus tells us the kind of father that he was. This fellow uh, is a and was a great father. This father's words tell us that he was first of all a man of faith. He believed in Jesus Christ. Any man's first step toward being a good father is their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I do not believe you can be 
the best kind of father you can be until you have first of all put your faith and trust in Christ as your Savior. Matthew tells us that this fellow came and knelt down before Jesus. This is an indication of his faith and his trust in Christ. There's no more desirable posture on the part of any father than kneeling before the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to really show your manhood to your sons or your daughters for that matter. You want to show them that you're a real man. Then let them see you on your knees. I'm sure my dad had some shortcomings. As a matter of fact, I know that he did. But there was one thing that impressed me as a little boy. And that is when he went to pray, he got on his knees. You want to show your manhood? Oh, there's a lot of fellows who think that's beneath them. That they're too macho. They're too manly to fall upon their knees. But my friend, the most manly thing you can ever do as a father is to get on your knees before the Lord. It was a desire to help his son that brought this man to Jesus in the first place. We're not told what kind of man he was before. He may have been a sorry scandal. I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us everything. The Bible tells us what we need to know. And so one day, uh, the Lord laid the little boy in this man's hands. And that is when the Father came out in it. To the everlasting credit of any man, who realizes when God has trusted him <clears throat> with that little boy that the father really comes out in him. I notice as this boy grew, the Bible tells us that some power of evil overtook him. How often that happens in the day in which we live we live in a very treacherous time when little boys growing up are exposed to all kinds of evil that overpower are likely to overpower them. Amen. And we need to be on our guard. We need to be perceptive as fathers to see it taking place and then know what to do about it. This was a wise father and a man of faith who saw this evil overtaking his son. And the Bible tells us that he brought him to Jesus. He did the best thing he could do. He brought him to Jesus. Wouldn't it be a great thing if fathers all across our land today could see the need of bringing their boys, just bringing their boys to Jesus. They didn't have any boys. I, but I'll tell you one thing. When my little girls came, uh, 
to the age of, if I felt like the age of accountability that I got to bring them to Jesus tell them about Jesus and what he could do for them well the greatest thing you can do for your son now I, I can appreciate a father wanting to do all of these good things for him uh, especially when they come to dad wanting a, a, a fishing <coughs> reel or um, a new bat, new glove. But when they get to be about 16, they want a car. And I can appreciate all of those good things that fathers want to do for them, but my friend, you'll never do for them as much as bringing them to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. So this fellow did the best thing he could do. He brought his son to Jesus. But I see something else in this picture. I see that while the father brought the son to Jesus, it was the son that brought the father to Jesus as well. And isn't that the way it should be? Sometimes that is the need. Father, sons who have come to know Christ as their Savior and His power to save and what He can do sometimes need to bring their fathers to the Lord Jesus Christ. But there's another thing I find here that this Father's words also reveal that He was a loving kind of person. Now I'm not talking about the sensual and sexual kind of love that is so misused and corrupted in our society today. You know a lot of folks in our time and in our society today feel like that everything is approved of if there is this kind of love involved. It's okay to move in and shack up if you love one another. That is this lustful, sinful, uh, sexual kind of love. No, I didn't. Literally millions of young people are making that a practice in our society today. My friend, the Bible says it is wrong, it is sin to do so <clears throat> without benefit of marriage. <clears throat> but anyhow <clears throat> uh, I'm talking about not that kind of uh, sensual love I'm talking about a familial love the kind of love that a father has for his children that's familial love I'm talking about an agape kind of love that's the kind of love that God has for you and me when he said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the kind of love this father had for his son and he shows that he's a loving kind of person. Now, this father's love caused him to suffer when his son suffered. He's the kind of father who takes pride in his son's successes, but also suffers with his son in his failures. Now, I know that by their very nature, mothers seem to be more uh, gentle and, and loving than fathers. But in spite of the father's masculinity and roughness on uh, in appearance he can also be deeply loving and tender thank God I've known some fathers like that I've known fathers who can take their children and embrace them in their arms and tell them 
that they love them, that they're praying for them, that they stand to defend them and to be with them whatever difficulty they may face. That's a father. That's a father. I read a little story. This old white-haired father was in the hospital. The doctor came to him and he said, my friend, you're dying. But I can't find the thing physically wrong with you. Do you have some great sorrow in your heart? The old man hung his head for a bit and then looked up into that doctor's face and said, Sir, I do. And he went on to tell his story. He said, years ago, My son committed a crime and I took the blame for it. He seems to have forgotten that. But it is still in my own heart. My friend, that's a father. That's a father. But this father's words also show that he was a man of good judgment. <coughs> Not all we fathers really embrace good judgment. I've often questioned myself along that line. But as I read this father's words, I uh, am convinced that he was a man of good judgment. He realized that his son was in great need of help. And he didn't send him out to get help. He didn't look for the nearest counselor. He brought him to Jesus. Now, I don't know what your son needs. I don't have to know. But I know what his greatest need is, my friend. And that is to bring him to Jesus. However, or whatever you may need to do in that process, the thing that he needs more than anything else. Yes, I appreciate the good things that you do. But the best thing you can do is to bring him to Jesus. And that's what this man did. He showed his good judgment by bringing him to Jesus. This is the kind of father who brings his children to Sunday school and worship service. He doesn't lay up in bed on Sunday morning sleeping like literally thousands of fathers in our society do today. And I realize they're not here. <laughs> I realize they're not here, but somehow or other, I hope they get the message. Lay up in bed on Sunday morning on the, after a night of carousing on Saturday night and feel justified in doing so they don't care where their children go. 
Oh, they may let them get on the church bus. Or they may even drive by and dump them off. But it wasn't this kind of father. The Bible tells them that he brought him to Jesus. He's the kind of father that brings him. He's, and he brought him to Jesus and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son. My friend, you can speak proudly to yourself when you can say, Master, I have brought unto thee my son. You know, this was David's mistake. David was a great king. David was a powerful man, a leader of men, but he was literally a failure as a father. No wonder his sons plotted against one another and plotted against their own father. Their father failed them as a father. What a difference it might have made. And would have made. If he had been the kind of father that he should have been. I think a great father is one who leads his children well. But I have one more word. Look at what happened. That son was saved. I don't know what evil had overtaken him. I don't know what evil may overtake our boys today in the world in which we live. There are so many. Drugs. Alcohol. Uh, evil, uh, evil notions, even ide evil ideas in the world in which we live. <coughs> Can you imagine a fellow who just gets the idea that it'll be good to take a rifle or a gun and into a crowd of people and just start firing? He didn't know anything about them. Doesn't know anything about it. Just feels like it's the right thing to do to just shoot people everywhere. I don't care what kind of morals they may or may not have. Is that the right thing to do? Just take a AK-47 or whatever it is. Start mowing folks down. I don't know what evil might overtake, but my friend, there are, there, there, there are a genuine evils out there that the devil is employing uh, to, deter, to destroy our boys and girls. They're out there. A little pot won't hurt you. A little this drug or that drug, it'll just uh, give you a high. But then you're hooked and you go on from one step to another. And like this boy, he's overpowered by that evil. What's the remedy? What's the remedy? All the counseling under heaven is not going to get the job done. But I'll tell you one thing that will. To do what this man did. He brought him to Jesus. And this boy was saved. Not only was his life saved, his soul was saved. And then there's another thing that happened as well. This father came to have a deeper understanding and deeper relationship with Christ. I want to ask you, how is it with you this morning, Father? How is it with you? 
the closer you can bring your son to Jesus in that relationship the deeper your relationship is going to be I guarantee you on the word of God we're going to sing an invitation Maybe we have fathers this morning that would like to come and say, I want that deeper relationship.